families, creating a lifetime of memories. Sadly, some families are denied these important moments due to the sad practice of alienation. These are Families Divided. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Families Divided TV. Thanks for being with us. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button, and that would be great. we will be happy to have you with us on a regular basis. Also, if you wish to be notified, just click that little bell, and you'll be notified of new content when we put it on. In this episode tonight, Dr. Sue Cornblue focuses on self-regulating your emotions. Emotional self-regulation is the ability to modify your thoughts, emotions, actions, and words. It can stop you from saying or taking impulsive actions that may hurt yourself or others. This is critically important for parents and grandparents trying to reconnect with their loved ones. Sending or saying impulsive messages can hold back the relationship from healing. Here, you will learn what regulation is and how using it boosts empathy for others and decreases your disappointment. We're looking forward to this episode. I do hope you'll pay close attention. Before we have Dr. Sue Cornbluth, we're going to have these messages and then she'll be with us. Divorce and co-parenting are a major life interruption for families, especially the kids, but also for parents and grandparents. And it's even worse in blame-filled, high-conflict cases. When parents engage in alienation by turning the kids against the other parent or grandparents, kids suffer. They're denied the opportunity to build the four big skills necessary for future resilience. New Ways for Families online class can help. Parents learn to use our popular Biff and Ear skills to calm the conflict and stop the hostile emails and texts. And we even have a class for kids and parents to learn together. Research shows a 75% improvement in joint parental decision making after this course is taken, plus overall improvements for kids' well-being. Don't wait to make this affordable investment in your children's future and improve your well-being too. Start learning new ways for your family today at conflictplaybook.com. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Sue Cornbluth, your expert in high conflict divorce and all kinds of alienation situations. I'm happy to be back with you here today to talk about a subject that I think is not talked about enough or at all when it comes to these kinds of losses. Today, we are going to talk about emotional regulation and why it is so important to reunification. Let's begin by talking about what self-regulation is. Self-regulation is the ability to understand and manage your own behavior and reactions to feelings and things happening around you. Now, one of the things that you have to do on a regular basis is manage your emotions about what is occurring in your alienation situations. And it's hard at times. It really is. And you cycle through so many different emotions, hope, not hoping, panic, then you're not panicked, fear, and then the fear subsides anger, depression, frustration, whatever it is, I promise you, you're going through something. Everybody is in this situation. The problems tend to occur when the emotions begin to take you over and you begin to do impulsive acts that do not benefit you in trying to get a better or a connection at all with your loved one. So that's why I'm talking about this today, because I see in the clients that we work with that there is a lot of self problems with self-regulation and also with emotional dysregulation, which we're going to talk about a later on in this presentation. 
when we're able to regulate our emotions, okay, and our strong emotions like embarrassment or excitement or anger, we're able to be in a place of calm to react to an email that comes in or to react to something we see on Facebook or to send something back to somebody that doesn't have the charge of the anger in it. That's how we can regulate ourselves. But it takes a very keen understanding of self-awareness uh, to get to self-regulation. We really have to work on ourselves to regulate and notice the feelings that we are having. We have to identify them. Then we have to learn ways to cope with them so that we can react from the best part of us. You know, in the recent days and weeks, I've been talking to a lot of my clients about the fact that at the time when the disconnection happened, that they were not self-regulated, that they were not at their best. So therefore, they couldn't give their best at the time to their children or whomever that they were separated from. The emotions took them over. And therefore, they were acting out of impulsiveness instead of a place of self-control. Where the issue with that lies is that when you are acting out of that place, what you're giving to the other person on the other side that you're trying to reconnect with is non-regulation. And if you're not self-regulated, then you cannot help the other person emotionally regulate. So that's really the key point of all of this. When two people are not self-regulated, then we have a really, really hard problem. And hope, and fortunately, there are ways to get through that as well. So I talked a little bit about there about the lack of self-regulation, but people overreact in the moment because they're not able to stop reflect on the situation and find a solution. Well, it's very hard to do that when you don't know what to do or what to say or how to communicate with the person that is ripping your heart out or really hurting you to your core. Everybody lacks self-regulation at times, everyone. It's normal. However, what if you could learn how to control those reactions? I can tell you for myself that learning how to do that has changed my life because I'm not reacting out of impulsivity. I'm reacting out of compassion and I'm reacting out of a place where I have given thought to how I'm gonna to respond to someone that is also hurting. Now, the reason that many people struggle with self-regulating themselves is because you might have trouble handling emotions and dwelling on the negative feelings or experiences that have occurred from what have happened in the separation. That's absolutely normal. And what I encourage people to do in order to get self-regulated is to really go deep into their own feelings that you may not be able to get to. And that's why I say it's really helpful to work with somebody that it can help you peel away the layers to get to where you need to be emotionally inside of you so that you can begin to practice self-regulating yourself instead of reacting from that impulsive place. Now, none of that is very easy, but it is worth it. In my work on a daily basis, we work with clients on focusing on and going to a deeper level of understanding about their own feelings, about what has occurred, about the loss, about the grief, about anything that you're feeling. Because if that stuff is stuck inside of you, then you can implode. That's what happens. If you build it up, you implode. And I, I'll tell you this, looking at your own stuff and going deep may seem very scary to you. And I understand that. But what's scarier to me is not going there 
to free yourself and forgive yourself or look at the things that have happened here in order to get closer to what you want, which is a connection again with your lost loved ones. Now, let's talk more about emotional dysregulation. Emotional dysregulation is the term used to describe an inability to regularly use healthy strategies to diffuse or moderate negative emotions. Individuals who regularly experience what feels like overwhelming, intense negative emotions are much more likely to, to rely on unhealthy strategies, like acting out impulsive decisions and gestures. So if you did not grow up with having great coping skills in order to deal with difficult situations that came into your life, you're probably going to experience a lot of emotional dysregulation later on in life. If things happen to you and nobody talked to you about them or explained the emotional repercussions of what happened along the way, you're going to struggle with regulating your emotions. Because when we're not able to use our voice and we don't feel that we are being listened to or heard or respected or given empathy, we get upset inside. And this can lead to all kinds of things such as rage and other negative emotions. So it's important that you take some time to look at the past of where you come from, to look at how you may have been parented and how your emotional needs were met. If you are acting out or you are having impulsive reactions a lot of the time, more than not, then you probably struggled very early on with emotional dysregulation. Fear not, I am here and towards the end, I am going to give you solutions and tips on how to manage this dysregulation. But for me, as you'll see as we go through this, this is the one place that I see the most that people are struggling with. And when you cannot control your own emotions, they come out in all the wrong ways and it prevents you from beginning a new relationship with your alienated children or grandchildren for that purpose. Reactions come from the fear of not being able to handle the overwhelming emotions. But I'm here to tell you that you can handle your fears. You can, anybody can with the right tools and the ability to look at yourself and to look at your own pain. There's not one person that has gone through this that is not in emotional pain. No way, no how. I have never seen it. And the first thing when I talk to people that come to us is I see the pain, I see the brokenness, I see what people are going through. And it's our job to help you heal enough from that pain. Not fully, this is not something that you fully heal from. It does get a little bit easier with time, but it is something that is very difficult to manage on, uh, on a daily basis. We talked about emotional dysregulation and now we're gonna talk about emotional regulation because that's where I wanna see a lot of you get to. Emotional regulation is the ability to exert control over one's own emotional state. It may involve behaviors such as rethinking a challenging situation to reduce your anger or anxiety, hiding visible signs of sadness or fear, or focusing on reasons to feel happy or calm. Now, do I want you to be hiding your visible signs of sadness or fear? Sometimes I do because it's not always appropriate to show those visible, those signs of sadness or fear, especially if you're at work. So it, it really depends on where you are or whom you're with. That is a part of emotional regulation is being able to manage your emotions when you're in different situations. And by now, you know, by watching a lot of my videos, 
that I believe that not everybody deserves to hear your story and that you benefit from going to people that you feel are empathetic towards you, that can give you support and will not judge you. So you have to be able to make those choices. But emotional regulation is the key to getting to a better place to go on the process of reaching out to your alienated loved ones in the best way possible. Now, how does all this relate to your alienation situation? So we just went over all of that. While any of us can have times when our emotions spin out of control, for some people it happens on a regular basis. So right now I'd like you to take a minute to just evaluate yourself right now. Are there times when you're triggered? Absolutely. There are things that trigger us from trauma that are out in the world every single day that we don't know are triggering us. And I don't know if they're going to trigger us, but when they do trigger us, sometimes we can go into a panic. When we go into that panic or that fear, that is not the time to reach out to people that you want to try to reconnect with. That is a time to sit down and evaluate the feelings that you are experiencing within yourself and give to yourself emotionally during that moment. To say to yourself, I have to sit down right now for a few minutes and collect myself and think about what is going on inside of me and why I'm feeling this way and saying to myself, I will get through this. I can get through this. I'm not going to run back and write a nasty email now to my ex or to my child or to whomever it is. That is self-regulation. Our, our emotions change so rapidly. So one minute we could be in a, a state of happiness and then the next in a state of sadness, depending what enters into our psyche. And so it is critically important that we stop ourselves on our own and have an awareness that what is going on in us is triggering us. And when we're triggered, we don't want to react to other people because in those moments, we're not emotionally regulated and we say things that we don't mean most of the time. And this relates because I've seen a lot of times when you're hurt and you're reaching out to the people that have hurt you as well, and you're saying things that you don't truly mean, but it's coming from a place of hurt. And as you know, saying those things do not heal these relationships. Compassion heals relationships. Understanding the other person's perspective heals relationships. So this today is all about you and getting you to a place where you can reach out, send things in the calmest place possible. Unregulated individuals cannot provide emotional regulation for others. That's just how it is. And it's the truth. I say this a lot to my clients. Well, where are you right now? Do you feel that your emotions are stable? Do you feel um, fear right now? Do you fear angry? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel that you're in a rage? How is that right now going to reflect on when you reach out to the person that you're trying to get in touch with? So I ask them, sit down now and write something out. And then when they write it out and they send it back to me, you can see the emotional charge behind it. And then I'll point out to them in there where the emotions are coming from, the phrases that they're using, such as, you don't know what you did to me. That's not going to go over very well with your alienated child who is feeling angry towards you. That's just not going to go over well, but that's coming from your own anger that is not resolved with inside of you. 
And so what you're trying, what you want to do is come from a better place so that you're regulating how they're going to react to what you're writing. Now, let's talk about beginning to heal and beginning to move into the ability to regulate yourself. I know that's what you're here for because that's what we talked about in the beginning. And that's what I'm going to go through for the rest of the presentation today. We have to begin regulating ourselves emotionally by creating space for ourselves. So when you're in a heated argument with someone, that is a time to create a new space for yourself. It's time to pull yourself away from what is going on there and take some time for yourself to clear your mind. You also, in situations like this, when you are not in contact with your loved ones, to create a calm space for yourself. Maybe it's in a special room in your house. Maybe it's at a coffee shop. I don't know where it is, but to create this safe space for yourself to be with your feelings, to be alone with yourself, to label your feelings, to be with your pain and feel the pain in a safe place so that you can start exploring those feelings openly with yourself instead of hanging on to them, which is giving you that charge a lot of times of saying the wrong things or acting the wrong way or making, not making the best choices when it comes to trying to reconnect. Second, I already named that because I'm ahead of myself, is noticing your feelings. What is it that you're really feeling about not being reconnected? Is it anger or is it sadness? Is it frustration or is it sadness? Sadness is really what is underneath all of the feelings that you're having. It's the inability to reach someone that isn't reaching back to you. And that creates a lot of sadness and tons of anxiety as well. So I want you to notice what your feelings are. The more that you notice your feelings, the more that you'll be able to come in there and start self-regulating them. One thing that my clients tell me a lot is they don't even recognize when they're frustrated or they're in panic or fear, or anxiety, and that may be you. Ask yourself that. So if you're not recognizing where you are, you're just acting out of whatever that emotion is, and a lot of times that can get you into some trouble. I know it has with me. Then I want you to name the feeling. So if I'm having anxiety today, I would say to myself, I'm having anxiety right now. I need to realize and recognize what I'm feeling in terms of the anxiety. Is my heart racing? Am I telling myself that this will never happen? Am I telling myself that there's no chance to this? These are all things that will cause your anxiety. I want you to name the, the feeling and I want you to recognize what it is that you're feeling. Then I want you to accept that you have this emotion instead of pushing it away. When we push away that we're sad, when we push away that we're anxious, what we're doing is fleeing from what we're really feeling and not dealing with that. That will not help you to move forward in what you desire. It won't help you to escalate the hope that you have. What it will do is decrease that hope. It's all right to have all these feelings. It's okay to be anxious and sad and aggravated and, and whatever it is that you're going through. It's normal. This is a tremendous loss. It hurts. But what I'm saying to you today is if we don't accept where we are, we can't go where we need to be. Remember that. 
If we cannot accept where we are, we can't go where we need to be. So that is the beginning steps of regulation, creating a space which is safe to look at these emotions, noticing your feelings, naming them, and then accepting that you have these emotions and that they're okay to have. Accepting that you have the emotion means that you will become more aware of it and be able to stop it from getting out of hand. Now, I'm going to go over with you some strategies that I find very useful to regulate your emotions. First, we identify and reduce our triggers. We've already talked about this. This is all about self-awareness. If you don't have self-awareness that you are actually being triggered, then as I said before, you can go off the rails and we don't want that to happen. So the most important thing is start noticing inside of yourself physically when you start to feel triggered. Now, a lot of people feel this either in their stomach or their throat or on the sides of their head or in the middle, they start getting a headache. These are the first symptoms that you will feel that your body and your mind is becoming unregulated. Don't ignore it. Stop there, look at them, talk to them. Talk to yourself and say, I can feel that I'm getting anxious right now. I feel this coming up for me. I need to take a minute to myself, to acknowledge this to myself, and to find a place where I can take some deep breaths for a minute or collect myself. Also, one of the strategies which I find most helpful is considering that the story you're telling yourself is not the actual story of what is happening to you. Now, I'm not saying that you're lying to yourself, so don't get that impression. What I'm saying to you is that for a minute, consider that the story you're telling yourself could not be true completely. And that, well, you may say to yourself, well, this my child doesn't love me anymore, or my child completely doesn't want me in their life, or they've forgotten me forever. You don't know that to be true, but those kinds of powerful emotions really trigger tons of anxiety in people. And so you have the power to reconstruct those thoughts and regulate those thoughts in your mind. You can switch that narrative to a narrative that is more positive. I don't know what they're feeling about me right now but I do know that they still love me somewhere inside of themselves. It's a way of reframing. And a reframing, and reframing really does help with self-regulation. Because if I say to myself, my child still loves me, that gives me hope. But when I say, oh, I probably won't get a response, they hate my guts and I'll never hear from them, that sends me into a different emotion, which is anger. Another great thing to do to self-regulate if your emotions are coming up in places that maybe you don't want to show other people what you're feeling is to shift your attention to something else. So if you're at work and you feel tears coming up, you can switch your attention to something else quickly. Get on the computer and do something. Start working on a report. But, there's a big but, but do not forget that later on, you have to go back and look at those emotions that you were having during that time in a safer place. But shifting your attention in that moment can really help. Practice positive self-talk. I talked a little bit about that. But there's other positive ways of talking to yourself that can really help you in regulating your emotions. One that I like is I'm not going there. I have enough self-control to not go to that reaction. I'm not going to get in a rage during this time. I have the ability within myself to stop myself 
from going into that rage. I am a good person. I don't need to react in this way to get what I desire. I can come from a place of compassion instead of anger. This is all positive self-talk. And what happens is when you're doing that in your mind, and I'm not talking about standing you know, up against the wall and talking to yourself out loud, but I mean, whatever works for you is fine. I'm talking about inner self-talk when you feel that you're in a state of dysregulation. You could have these calming talks with yourself. You know, the one thing that I'm gonna talk about next is what my thing is, right? Is self-compassion and giving yourself compassion. And that's what so many of you have forgotten to do along the way. So when people come to us and they say, Dr. Sue, what do you mean we're starting with self-compassion? I just want to learn how to get to my children and fix this. Well, first of all, we don't fix things and we don't fix people. We heal things. And second of all, if you don't know how to comfort yourself, right, and have that compassion for yourself, you're certainly not going to know how to give it to others. So giving ourselves self-compassion and telling ourselves that we're strong, we're worthy, we made mistakes, we can forgive ourselves from those mistakes. Other people have made mistakes that put us in these situations, but I'm still okay. And I can do this and I'm here for myself and I love myself. You know, people think that is so ridiculous. So just saying, I love myself. It truly does make a difference because when you say you love yourself, it triggers something in your brain is called dopamine, which releases and makes you feel better. Positive talk helps you feel better. When somebody else can't give you compassion, the greatest thing on earth is that you can give it to yourself and say to yourself, I am going to be okay. Don't have to react in the same way I did before. And then this comes down to the biggest thing, making a choice on how to respond in a positive way to yourself and others. If you can practice the things that I taught you here today to get in a state where you feel you can regulate your reactions. I mean, let's face it, that's what emotional regulation is, where you're able to regulate your own reactions to things that are upsetting. You can make that choice for yourself, but you have to recognize at first that it's going on. I told one of my clients this yesterday, I'm going to share it with you. We here at Dr. Sue and you have helped hundreds and hundreds of parents and grandparents reconnect with their children or grandchildren. Some of them have, most of them have actually, but some of them have it. And the key factor that I have seen in not reconnecting in, in certain cases is that there is not much of the self-regulation or emotional regulation going on that the emotions within the person is still taking them over. And they're coming from that place of fear and anger and distress. This is a gift, everybody. Self-regulation and emotional regulation is a gift. And I want you to try to practice this. Bring this into your life. Read about it more. Sign up with us to do more work on it. Because this is such a key factor. When you're healed and you're in a better place, you are in a much better place to really go strong on the reunification process. The people that were able to really work through their pain, open up those hard wounds and get regulated had much better chances of reconnecting. I enjoy being with you again, as I always do on these trainings. I hope that you're learning a lot here. I think Family Access is wonderful. It gives you so many tools, different tools that are out there that other people are not talking about. So keep watching the videos, sign up for our conference. And if you wanna contact me, you can at Dr. Sue and You. There is our email address. 
And then we just have come out with an online virtual reunification classroom for parents and grandparents. This is uh, three webinars that I have put together that talks a little bit about this, about reconnecting, about healing, about everything to start you in the beginning process of reconnecting with the people that you are separated from. But most importantly, it helps you to reconnect with yourself and people watching this, use the code LEARN15 and you will get a 15% discount. Thank you everybody for being with me again. Stay strong and remember, you have choices. When you feel all control is lost, you do have choices still in different parts of your life. Thanks everybody and be well. On our next episode of Families Divided TV, attorney Jean Coleman speaks to us on family violence. What do the reported cases tell us?